So that's an online service that sends out a signal yeah. about information and we can look at it, read it, and use it to do something. Like Eskom Sepush is an example. MQTT, okay, a data transmission, very low bandwidth, works on weak internet signals. Um, we use that extensively in our system. And that's also part of it. And there's LoRa, which we'll talk about today, which is very low bandwidth, free frequency, long distance communication, wireless communication. That's like super interesting. So yeah, once again, Venus, via the internet connection or cable connection, you can now access those protocols. Am I right there? All this, eh? Comment if you want to. But this is basically the structure of IoT, the internet of things. Okay, so the device layer, you know, all the physical equipment installed, that's doing something, providing power, switching power, intelligent, <laughs> Shelly, Sonoff switches, generators, energy meters, Modbus energy meters, of course, EV inverters, they work on SunSpec, they have Modbus registers, user wires on the internet. So if they have an app, we can look at it, we can interface with it, but just some of them are really complicated. Okay, there's a servo also doing something. Then you get the, the network layer with all the protocols, the routers. That's why I spoke about internet connectivity. We need to upskill our internet connectivity. Why oh, guys are doing it? Talk to some people here. Some guys are using um, Microtik, very nice, very expensive. David, what's the one that you're using? Um, Cuddy. Okay, half the yeah. price, apparently, just as good. But there's some IT guys here that, like Peter and my. They're very good on IT. They know all the routers. Talk to them. Find out what's working. What In anything else except Yeah, yeah. Well, you see. But this is why we're here. These guys have really good knowledge. Talk. Find out what you're doing for the internet. How do you solve this issue? But sometimes we need to upgrade the internet network or the Wi-Fi network of the customer. And we want to get something with a VPN as well. But no dread. It brings in a nice functionality, which yeah, we'll show you. Then you have the processing layer. So that's now the Venus with the node red and the VRM, because that is where the things get done. Okay. Um, Carl, the guy from Solar, also super duper. And then you get the solution layer, you know, cooling, pumping, HVAC, lighting, sustainable energy, arbitrage, water heating. You can think on and on and on. The solutions are really very interesting. Okay. Just a brief overview. So, node red. The PLC-based program is built into the Venus GX, um, connecting hardware, APIs, online services, um, provides this browser-based editor, which I'll talk to you about now. But basically, this is what it looks like. So you have a, a Victron product, and you have these little nodes, you connect them to each other. So from here, we're reading information from that Victron product. It comes into a switch or a function or a change node. We use and change the data so this must be putting out power values or state of charge values. And in here, we're changing that to another signal to, so that something else can read it. So uh, a power value to a one and a zero. Okay. But sometimes on the other end, you have like say ESS. ESS has different states, you know, a battery life, keep batteries charge, and that comes with a number. So number one, two, three, four. So you're changing that power value to a number value, telling it when the wattage is there, change the state to that. And that's where these nodes come in, you're changing those values. And this is where all the complexity comes in, really. And once you understand that, and you know where to find the info, it just, yeah, that's, this is like level one. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna go through that today and show you, okay, but it's fun and games. Uh, so all the devices that, that support uh, Node Red, from the top, Ekrana, of course, the most powerful, Processing everything down to the bottom, multi plus 2GX also works with Node Red. Obviously, the processing power is slightly less. So you can't build a huge, complicated flow with a high update rate. Okay, so what you need, you need a Victron system with products connected, and that'll determine what you can do with Node Red. You can't try and do a Node Red flow with a product that you don't have installed. Okay, but it needs to be part of your system, and then you can interact with it. But we'll go through that. Um, and these are all our resources that we have for Node Red training. So we have some webinars that have been done. We have a blog. Uh, we can go read up about it. We have a very nice manual that tells you how to install it. 
Um, they have geeked up resources where people are doing all kinds of things with Node Read and they put their flow up there so you can download it, put it in your system, play with it. Ah, we like this, we like that. We learn from other people and we're the community. And there's a lot more. There's a lot, lot more. Okay, so it's not, the information's not hidden. You just need to, when you want to activate that, that hunger in you today. So in, uh, in Europe, we've, uh, my German colleague has built this Node Read training case. I just want to show it to you. Very nice on a suitcase, on a pedestal. Uh, it's got an Ecrano, it's got a 12 volt input, it's got a Ruby sensor. Who knows what a Ruby sensor is? Who doesn't know what a Ruby sensor is? Okay, it's a Bluetooth sensor that communicates with the GX device via Bluetooth, measures temperature, barometric pressure, humidity, okay. and movement. Okay, yeah. And those values we can put into our system and do something with. Okay, movement's also interesting. And then at the bottom here, it's got some relays with some buttons, digital inputs, uh, communication ports to product systems. It's got tank level sensors, so you can simulate it and you can see how the system is for training to show you. Um, yeah, they're available to be purchased. They're a little bit expensive, but they're there, but it's just a concept. Very nice, very compact. Thank you. Wow. Maybe we're going to build something similar to Africa. I don't know, just to control the price. Like yeah, very nice. Um, so yeah, training box, you need a router, laptop, and then you can do a full node red setup and training. So the guys that are going to help us with training, they must say, look, do you want one or not? Okay. I've really have ordered some. Okay, so node red, how do we start? First thing is, you must go to the Venus system, go to the firmware, update to the large image. You see it over there? Click an update. Then you go down to settings, integration, node red, and you go enable the node red. So there's some other options there we'll talk about when, we, um, when we're actually doing it, but yeah, you can see one of the links. So uh, to access node red on the VRM, if you're on your remote desktop, you can click on that and take you directly to that for this particular site. So there's, there's those links I spoke about yesterday with the new documentation that that's very nice. Um, yeah, then you gotta go into integrations again, a switch on MQTT that so enables that so now I can search for other MQTT devices for communication and then on the VRM you refresh your page and then the Venus node red will pop up okay then you've got yes so in simple it's it's a TCP protocol so it works over LAN or Wi-Fi it's very lightweight and um, it works in very basic terms there's a broker which for example the GX will be the broker and then you have you can publish messages to the broker and you can then again subscribe from that so from that broker so you'll have a topic for example room slash temperature then you publish the sensor will publish that to the broker and then anywhere else that's connected to the broker can subscribe again on that topic for example room slash temperature then you will get that data so that's the, that's the that's a very technical way of saying it, but basically what it is is that the a device will transmit using MQTT protocol, not Wi, but it's on the Wi-Fi, but it's very low bandwidth, and it's a it's, it's easy and it doesn't need, need a very strong uh, internet connectivity to a broker, which will be the GX, and in the GX the information will sit there. Then you can go and look for the info and say oh, I want to extract the temperature or I want to extract that info. Then you use that to do something else. I've I've seen that. Uh... I didn't understand it. Uh, it takes, it takes a very long time. You can't understand it just like that. Yeah, it takes time. If we could do an example. Yeah. I'll, I'll take you through it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the plan for today. Yeah. We'll get there. No, it's just a very simple way of sending a message. It's yeah. only very really right way. It sends it very simply, but then. Oh, yeah. But the idea is it sends it to one central location, that's what Andre said, and then many things can tie in and can read it. from it. Uh, yes. that, okay. yeah. that broker can also be in the cloud. Yes, so yes, it can also be in the cloud. You can send from any device, anywhere with internet connection, a message to that cloud broker, and then from anywhere else, they can make, for example, several mm -hmm. systems that's not even in the same location over the cloud. So am I right to say that that's actually one of the Better benefits of no. no, it's just one of the protocols. It's just one of the many. No, so if you they they can't do anything without knowing that. I've tried a few things that 
that seems to be one of the things that you need to want to you think but maybe it, it, let's put it another way and, I, and even the victron communicates to nodred i don't know the, it's it's dbus but you can access the victron's information the core data the power the battery to charge through mqtt so it's got a built-in mqtt that it sends to this broker let's call it the server that's why we switch it on yes okay. that means so our whole remote console a lot of that is using mqtt because you don't need a strong internet connection and that's why we made this available with a new GUI that's designed for that. So if you've got a, because in the past, if you had a bad internet, you couldn't access remote console. Oh, for instance, so that's why we've designed, that's all part of it. Low bandwidth, low processing power. There's some, some relays on the, on the, what the, the K1 and K2. You can't, you can't access them. Of course, you use yeah. assistance for that. Yeah. The assistance, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 you can. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a simple way that Andre refers to. We're we'll, we'll getting there today. Okay. So let's just get back to yeah. So once you have this visible, then you go. You you can. So now there's different ways to access it. So you come here. You can click on that. Uh, it'll open it up. Or if you're on the same Wi-Fi as your system with your laptop and you're not on the VRM, you can enter either the IP address or that should take you straight there, and you can access Node Red from there. Correct. Okay. How to find the IP address? Yeah, you guys should know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> right. So then you have the editor. That's what it starts up with. And there's a very nice little, you guys should go through this. It'll tell you about the features, the information, uh, what's new. It's always good to look at that. Um, so on the left here, we have the, we have the nodes. So these are all the information of the that you can either take information from or send information to or change information that the node palette. This is the flow editor in the middle. Uh, and at the top here, we have this drop down menu where you can select what you want to view. Do you want to import the flow, export the flow? Do you want to search for flows? Because there's a lot of free flows available in the market. If you know what you're looking for, you go search, you can go find it. There's configuration nodes, there's different categories depending on what you have over here already. Manage your palette. If you want to import certain things, you go there and you go and search Sonoff or Shelly or Modbus. Um, and then there's the, the website settings. Yeah. So I just want to show you how to find that, what that looks like. Then we have the nodes. So yeah, we have so the system. If, if you do the Victron installation with a large setup, you'll get this. So you'll have all these common nodes, you know, the, the input, the inject, the debug. The catch the, there's a whole list of them where you can uh, the inputs and change nodes and at the bottom you'll have the victron palette and that is all the victron equipment it looks like this oh i have another slide for that so you can see so there's an example of all the input nodes you can inject you can catch you can change there's a lot of other things so these are all the inputs with a little block on the right so they send the information okay these are the output nodes so they receive information Okay. And these are the change, the function nodes. So they don't go in the middle. So that manipulates the input and the output data. So either switching it, changing it, creating a range, okay, creating a template, you want to delay it, trigger it, there's lots. Filter, execute. Okay, and that's the fundamentals. Okay. So over here, you would have your relays will be over here. You want to activate the relay, switch the relay on, on a condition. Okay. I'll we'll show you how to find it. So that's basically an overview of all the Victron nodes. You can see PV inverter, motor, yeah, GPS, ESS, DC source, alternators, there's lots. Charger, EV charger, pump control. And we have these new ones, which are virtual ones, which are very, very interesting. Because now you can import basically any device. And what that does is it puts you into the GX device as a device list and on the VRM, even though you're not supported, officially Victron supported. That's where the really interesting stuff is now. But yeah, okay. How am I doing? Good? Yeah, very good. Thank you. So now we're looking, I've now got a, a node in here. And if you go to the top and you click on the, the info box, this will pop up. It'll tell you. This is the input node, a selectable inputs. 
have two selectable inputs, which means it can send different information and describes the information you can get. You can get the measurement selection. Yeah. So they have it for all the device. All the nodes have this. So once you've done this, you can actually scroll through each one. You can go read up and say, okay, now that's the information I'm looking for. Or explains it. So that's where you can do your self learning. Okay. So that's an interesting one. There's some more here which we'll do in the hands on. We'll go through the other ones. And then once you're in this section now, now you're in the, the flow editor area, I call it that. Is that about right? Okay. So now we have a node, but now we want to do something in this space. So just ignore this for now. So now maybe I want to import something. So you can just right click. This pops up and it'll give you a whole action list. So show your last action, what you did before. But insert is interesting for me because I go insert, import example flow. And there's a database. And I can go look for, oh, Eskom's a push, bang. It brings the whole thing in. It's there waiting for you to use. I'm showing you the shortcuts that I've learned over the last time. Ah, that's where that is. So this is a very nice way to, to learn how to use it. There's some other things. Export to a file. Share it with him because he was asking for it. You can export your flow. You can import, not from here. You've got to go back to the menu, but yeah, it's there. Okay. Good. You guys are going to copy. So, in parallel with all of this, we started a software integrator program at the end of 2023, I think. Um, so, I've just, yeah, so there's a link to our professional portal that explains the whole program, but basically what it is, we have engineers all around the world now um that are specialized in node red mqtt vrm api all these advanced customizations and we have some specialists in this room we have some guys that are actually on the list and they make these services available to everybody so if you have a concept you have a system you want to design and you don't have the time to put into doing that those services are available emailing there's a list and you know they've got all this experience they're doing this all the time and he will tell you by the hour do the flow for you, walk you through it, do a bit of debugging, offer you a contract for service, whatever, and also kind of help you at some point. I mean, you're going to pay for his time, but it helps you to get up to that level if you can't get there right away, because it's quite a big step up. Okay. Um, so yeah, find the right software integrator for your needs. You can visit the list. Um, yeah, or contact us. We can help you with that. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you've made it this far, I sincerely hope you have enjoyed the content and learned something new. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, as well as to get notified of any future videos. Oh, and make sure to check out this video as well. You can also subscribe over here. And this one is pretty cool too. Lastly, don't forget to visit and sign up for a free account at the Blue Power Pro Forum.